Hi, good morning and welcome to Chester Zoo Live. Uh, my name's Debbie, I'm one of the primate keepers here at the zoo and we're here this morning on Chim oh, well, at Chimpanzee Island. Uh, we've just let the group out onto the island so hopefully you can see Boris there and um, we've put a few sort of hessian parcels out for them this morning uh, so he's managed to find one and there's a lot of vocalisation going on at the minute so they're all sort of quite excited. I think they're going to see if they can share which they probably won't do. That's it, Boris has had his five minutes. <laughs> He's like, I'm off, I'm going. So we have uh, 20 chimpanzees here at the zoo. Uh, we've got six males and 14 females. And it's a really sort of nice group. There's sort of a range of ages. Boris, who you saw there at the beginning, is our oldest. He's about 54. And then our youngest is Annie, and she's gonna be one in July. And then we also do have another little uh, chimpanzee in the group called Stevie, who I know people are quite fond of. Um, and she'll be two in June. So hopefully we'll get a glimpse of them when everyone's sort of settled down and they've found all their sort of food and sacks this morning. We've just got Boris there again, <laughs> heading up to. So he's a group, uh, with some of the older guys now in the group. So you've got uh, Boris, Friday and Nikki all sort of heading off, getting some sacks there. So it's a little bit chilly here this morning, there's a little bit of drizzle in the air so they may sort of spend a few minutes out on the island and then make their way back inside where it's a bit warmer. They have been a little bit noisy uh, this morning, we do have as I said 16 females in the group and it is a breeding group. Um, so a, lot, a few of our females at the moment you'll probably notice have got quite big bottoms. Um, We've got Dylan here at the very front with Sally. Um, she's got quite a big bum at the moment, so he's very interested in her following around, checking out a bum. So chimpanzee females sort of come into estrus um, sort of between sort of 10, 11 to 12 days is when they're sort of at their maximum sort of fertility. So that period's really intense for them and the males will tend to follow them around, which is what Sally is doing. Well, Dylan's doing now with Sally. Um, and then at the front now we have Mandy, she's one of our older girls in the group and she is grandma to Stevie. So she's, she's a really good grandma, she uh, sort of interacts quite a lot with Stevie but she, this is sort of a, one of her favourite spots on the top of the island. She quite likes sitting here sort of watching everything going on which she's doing now this morning, probably wondering what we're doing here. Obviously it's quite quiet here at the zoo now and chimps are really sort of curious animals, they're very intelligent. Um, so they've obviously noticed there's a, a bit of a change here in the zoo at the moment and kind of wondering where all the people have gone. And I know we have quite a few regulars who sort of come into the zoo and see the chimpanzees on quite a, a, a regular basis. So they definitely have noticed that yeah, no one's here, their little fan club. Um, so yeah, they'll, they'll be very welcome yeah, back when the, the zoo's back open. It'll be nice to see everyone and the chimps will really enjoy seeing them again. As I said, Boris is our oldest chimp in the group and uh, as I said, he's about 54 years old. The oldest chimp sort of recorded is about 66 years old, but this is really quite old. Um, the average lifespan for a chimpanzee probably in the wild is between 30 to 40 years old. Um, you always get sort of the exceptions to the rule, so hopefully Boris is going to be one of them. Um, he's, he's always he used to be fighting fit. Uh, at the very top there now, sort of up on the uh, ropes there is um, Alice and that is Annie with her I'd say Annie is going to be one in July so yeah Alice has been a really really good mum. Um, Annie is very still much on mum at the moment she sort of ventures off and plays a little bit on the mesh um, have sort of seen over the last sort of few days that she's sort of trying to encourage Annie to like walk a little bit more she'll sort of put her down and try to encourage her to come over and walk towards her but so she's getting there is it's little baby steps still at the moment with Annie whereas uh, Stevie is very much independent and sort of running around I think they're all heading in a little bit out there the rain's got a little bit heavier so yeah we'll head over to the near the front of the island as yeah Stevie has appeared with her mum Zizi um, so we have yeah Zizi is as I said uh, 
mum to Stevie. Um, uh, there is also uh, Tina who's making a dash in there, who is sister to Stevie. So we're just going to try and follow them in, see what they're up to. Followed in there by Eric. We've got sort of two teenage boys in the group who are quite boisterous at the moment. They're sort of the next challenges for Dylan, our dominant male. Um, and then we have Nicky who <laughs> the shelters from the rain, I think. He's quite sensible. You got a good spot there, Nicky. Stevie, I don't know if you can see the camera there. So yeah, they've been sensible and they've headed inside out of the rain. So we've got Tina who's just stood up there now having a bit of a sit down. I think they do they do like it out on the island, so they'll spend quite a lot of time out there now. <laughs> so Stevie is getting quite boisterous now and she's really sort of finding her own voice. And um, you hear her sort of vocalising a lot when they sort of come in of the evening now for their sort of main feed. She sort of really joins in the group now. You sort of get those excited sort of food calls. Um, so she's getting a little bit of peace and quiet for a moment. You've just got Sarah approaching Stevie now. Sarah's one of our older girls in the group. She doesn't always tolerate Stevie that much. Sometimes she'll just sort of push her out of the way. So Stevie, yeah, might move out of the way. Hi, Eric. <laughs> So this is Eric that's just having a bit of a patrol around the perimeter of the moat here. I think just checking out everything is going okay. As I said, these two boys, Eric and Carlos, are kind of Dylan's next sort of challenges. Um, Eric's a little bit smaller than Carlos and he sort of isn't as social all the time, so he may struggle, whereas Carlos is a big, a big fella, so he stands a better chance. So you see, these guys are really playful. Um, Tina, although she's 11, she's still quite immature and she, she does get in trouble quite a bit. She, Dylan's been telling her off quite late, a lot quite lately. So yeah, they're always on the go, these two. So one bit of sack is never enough. They'll always try and steal each other if they can get hold of them. Um, it's quite nice. There was food in these parcels, which obviously they've got out, but then they'll spend a lot of time sort of just making their own little games up and being quite inventive. As I say, the chimps are so intelligent, um, some more so than others. They all have sort of their different quirks. Um, Stevie is a very, like, yeah, confident. She's just a really nice character. I'm not sure if Sarah's sort of getting annoyed a little bit by her or <laughs> she wants to play. And here's Boris, he's just coming in now with a good stash of sacks there. He'll probably come up to the window a little bit, be a bit curious. As I said, Boris was um, hand-reared back in New York and then he came to the zoo years ago and has been here ever since. Um, so he is still quite focused on people, he does kind of like the attention. Um, so, and he is, he's a, he's, a, he's a bit of a poser, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Giving a good pose there. So he's just got some nuts there that he's going to get his way through. So the chimps do get a varied diet here at the zoo. They've kind of had their breakfast already this morning, which is just some like primate pellets that we give them, along with some veg, and then they'll get a sort of three or four feeds then later on the day, which is the same bit, fruit and veg, some more pellets. We also give them lots of things like leaves, like willow, which they really enjoy. Um, hiya. What are you up to? You can really read a lot in their expressions and they're quite, it's easy to see if they're angry or mad at you or if they're being playful. Um, if they're being playful, quite often they'll kind of tap their feet and stamp around and slap their hands as well. Um, or obviously, if they're annoyed, they just look really annoyed, don't you? You look pretty chilled there, Bodge. Yeah. <laughs> Same morning. It's like, yeah, okay, good morning. So Boris did used to be dominant male in the group, but Dylan took over and it was kind of a, a peaceful takeover, um, which was really good to see, because these guys can be quite aggressive sometimes. And there's a few that have got old injuries and war wounds. 
Um, but usually chimpanzees are such social animals that they have these big disagreements, but they really sort of make up quite quickly. It's a really important part of chimp behavior is sort of making friends again. Um, and this is kind of what Stevie's learning at the moment now. She um, is learning her kind of place in the group. Um, you might spot on Stevie that she has like a little white tuft on her bum. And this kind of makes her sort of a little bit special in the group. And it means she get, can get away with some behaviours that the other chimps can't. So like, for example, she can maybe slap Dylan, the dominant male, on, on the head. And that's fine. But if one of the girls did that, then they'd be in a, a lot of trouble. Um, so it kind of gives her immunity for a little bit while she's got that white tail tuft. Um, and uh, so she's sort of going to be learning from the rest of the group on how to behave. Uh, she just got Sarah grabbing hold of her there. Now Tina's come in, I think, to sort of rescue her a little bit. Um, Tina's really good with Stevie. She sort of looks after her and carries her around, plays a lot with her. There she goes, up on the strapping. Yeah, so as I said, Stevie has got a lot to learn in this group. I'd say there is 20 of them. They've all got different personalities, all things they like and don't like. So she's sort of got to learn all that. So she's sort of doing that very gradually. She did tell Chrissy off the other day for being a bit too rough for playing with her. And Chrissy took that sort of notice straight away and stopped playing and like let her have a little moment to sort of think about what had happened. I think the rain's getting a bit heavier outside now, I can hear it, so <laughs> we might get a few more heading in. So she's quite happy now though, she's had some food, she's just going to play around there for a little bit. And we just got Friday sort of heading into the top of the shop there, he's one of the older boys in the group, he's about 44 years old. And then sort of we'll just move the camera around to the top here. You can see this is Vila. Um, she came to the zoo about four years ago as a potential breeding female. So hopefully in the future she'll have some babies. Um, but she's still sort of settling into the group. In the wild, what would happen with chimpanzees is it's that the females who move from their family groups, um, usually when they're about sort of maybe 11, 12 years old, and then they'll maybe have a baby when they're about 15. Um, this is one of the reasons why chimpanzees are endangered. Um, it just, they just take so long for them to have a, a viable population. So it can take 15 years for them to have a baby. And then in another five years, they may have another baby. But then it's um, really quite tricky out there in the wild. And not many survive. Maybe only 50% will make it to adulthood. So this is one of the reasons why chimps are endangered and why sort of we're working here so hard at the zoo to sort of obviously sort of protect them in the wild and um, we work um, with a park called Gashatka Gumpti um, working out there we do things like monitor camera traps and we also help to raise awareness obviously of the plight of the chimps and gorillas and all the other species in those forests. Um, the camera traps are really important because they sort of monitor obviously the animals and they can see how populations are doing so that's really good positive news. We have seen in some parks that there are sort of increased maybe in numbers. Um, but these guys obviously are just very vulnerable. They're vulnerable to poaching out in the wild. And also like us at the moment, they're vulnerable to infectious disease. So this is another thing that can really affect chimpanzee numbers out in the wild. Here at the zoo, obviously, we have vets to take care of them when they're poorly and sort of give them the best health care that they need. Um, but yeah, you can't unfortunately do that in the wild. So and as, as we um, people may know, um, chimpanzees are really closely related to us. Um, we're probably at 98, well, 98.4% genetically similar. But obviously, there is a, a big difference between us still. Um, you'll see with these guys as they're sort of moving around, they sort of do something called knuckle walking rather than walking upright, which is what we do. So obviously they just, uh, for them to walk upright, they can do, but it involves a lot of muscles. Whereas uh, we have sort of special uh, differences with our knees. So our knees kind of lock into place. So it makes it really easy for us to walk upright. Whereas chimpanzees, they always have to use their muscles. So it takes a lot more energy. Um, obviously these guys are really vocal and we kind of do have same sort of similar sort of vocal kind of cords and structure in there in the throat. Um, but genetically, we are a little bit different, so it's one of the reasons why uh, we all, all have all these differences. Everyone's quite chilled out now at the moment. 
Are you watching, Boris? <laughs> So at the, in the moment in the yard, we have a majority kind of, of our girls and our older boys. I think Dylan and Carlos are sort of tr troublemakers in the group for sort of having a good nose outside. Um, chimpanzees in the wild can live in really large groups, um, maybe up to sort of 200, though a typical group might be sort of 20 to 30. Um, and they'll split off from each other during the day and come back. So you'll maybe get lots of like little groups in an area especially if there's lots of fruit in trees and then eventually they may all come together. So our guys here, some will go out onto the island and spend a bit of time out there. Others will come inside and just chill out. We've got Stevie playing there with Eric. He's being quite gentle with her. So it's all about social bonds in chimpanzees. It's all very, uh, it changes from day to day, minute to minute sometimes. Obviously, especially with a chimp like Eric, who maybe thinks he might like to be a bit higher up in the group, will sort of needs to kind of work out who's his good friends in the group, and he needs to kind of have them on side. Because although the, the males in chimp groups are the dominant ones and the females are lower ranking, they do need support of the females. They can't just rely on sort of strength alone to be in charge. So they do, they really need to make an effort to win their friends over and keep them on side. It's why we've got our older guys here still in the uh, yard, have been here together years, so they're a really close-knit little group of boys. We can, uh, we can wander out and see who's outside. <laughs> I think they're all hidden in the tunnel outside. We've got the... Uh, there's a group that are just hidden out in the, the little sort of concrete tunnel in the middle of the island there, which provides a good bit of shelter. There's quite a large space at the back there, so yeah, they've all kind of snuck off down there. And this might be typical, it might be obviously Sally, who you might remember seeing earlier on with that really big bum. She's most likely over there somewhere. And uh, although a dominant male might have sort of his pick of the girls, sometimes everyone will kind of sneak off if they think maybe there's a chance that they can make some of them. So there's, there's Alice again with Annie. So as you can see, compared to Stevie, she's a lot more dependent on mum still at the moment, especially when she's out here on the island. She just, she's always carried around, usually by Alice. Uh, we do have Alice's sister in the group, a female called Chrissy, and she's a really good auntie and she looks after her as well. And then we also have another chimp called Patty, who people may have seen on Secret Life of the Zoo when she sort of first took Stevie when she was a very tiny, tiny baby. And Patty's kind of lost interest a little bit on carrying Stevie around now. She's too big for her, so she quite likes to take care of Annie as well. So yeah, as you can see there, she's sort of... So now when they do have babies, they tend to sort of hang back a little bit in the group. Alice is quite a large female and sometimes she sort of would get in the middle of fights. Um, but now that she's got Annie, she'll sort of keep her distance a little bit more. Occasionally she will get involved. She's still got that in there. But obviously she does have to protect little Annie there. So I think Sally's having a good look through then to <laughs> see if there's anything left. So out here um, on the island, there are lots of things for them to forage around all the bushes. Uh, they'll eat things like the berries that come out onto the island. They do eat nettles as well. They seem to quite like the tasty nettles. They'll eat those. So it's quite nice seeing them forage around. There's some quite big fish in the moat around here at the zoo as well. So sometimes that does scare the chimps a little bit when they jump out. Because um, yeah, although they are sort of very strong animals and very tough, Little things sometimes can upset them and you're never quite sure what it'll be. They can be a little bit unpredictable. So that's it, now the rain's died down a bit, everyone is back outside. I think Nikki's moved out from under the flat. <laughs> Oh, being very quiet at the moment. Probably jigged it now. 
but yeah, because they can be, they're some of the largest, well, loudest animals here at the zoo sometimes. It's all you can hear when they're sort of having a bit of a disagreement. Um, but generally with chimps, it does sound a lot worse than it actually sort of looks. Because it is, it's all about bluff and display. Sort of, they'll try to intimidate each other. They don't really want to get into a fight because especially the males do have big canine teeth which can inflict sort of quite a lot of damage. So they'll just try to sort of bluff each other and it's all about intimidation and sort of give the impression of who is the biggest. And as I say, they do rely on their friends in the group. So the boys, we've got, I don't know if you can see Carlos. He's just sort of down there. So as I say, he's sort of probably the next challenger for uh, Dylan there. He's a very uh, clever chimp. He's very social. He gets on well with a lot of chimps in the group and you can see him sort of getting involved in little disagreements and he'll sort of, if there's an argument, he will get in there and maybe try and settle things. So it kind of shows that he can take care of the group and sort of sort problems out when they happen. And Dylan is kind of just taking a little bit of a back seat sometimes, which might not work in his favour. As you can see there, they're fantastic climbers. I'm very jealous. <laughs> As, um, like us, um, they've got their yep, hands and the hands and feet are very good at gripping things. Um, but they do have shorter thumbs compared to us, so it means they're it's a better able for them to sort of grasp hold of branches and things. They'll get a better get get a better grip. Um, whereas with their feet, their feet are more like hands. Really, they've got a lot of grip with their feet. So that's Tina just making her way across the web in there. She's going to head down. But they do, they make it look really, really easy. So we're going to leave these guys to it. Hopefully they'll enjoy the have a, probably have a little bit of a nap now. So um, I hope you've enjoyed meeting our chimps here at the zoo. Thanks very much for uh, joining us this morning. Um, I do believe we have the painted dogs next. That's going to be at 12 o'clock. So that's going to be really exciting. So I hope you enjoy that and thanks very much.